All right, hello again, this is Philip. I just had a request the other day for a tutorial or an explanation on how to use the new uh, curve tool. And it's really not that new, but it has changed. And if you had in the past used an earlier version, let's say a free version 1.2, Project Dog Waffle, even PD Pro 3, 4, uh, 5, and even 6, when we started having the Howler Edition and the Artist Edition, uh, it was still the old style curve tool. And um, nowadays, when you, I think since version 7.1, that's when we introduced a, a new version of the curve tool. And it has evolved quite a bit. So when you click it, you'll see an extra a bar here, what, which we call the context bar. Right? So normally you see just one, uh, <coughs> well, primary context bar. There's the menu bar above it, there's the context bar. But some tools will have additionals. Um, the text tool has just one, the fill tool has just one, uh, many of these tools have just one, but there's a couple, like the curve tool, that has an extra uh, set of controls. And uh, it's through that that you'll see much of the, the new power uh, available in the curve tool. So to understand how the curve tool uh, works, let me just use uh, an existing regular brush first, the default large airbrush. And what I'll do is I'll actually set the, the step distance to a pretty high value, so you see the the big distance traveled before the next dab comes down. I'll also give it a, a higher opacity, and uh, what was the step? A little bit lower, you know, higher opacity, there it is, and a little bit smaller step. There you go. <clears throat> so, um, you know, this this is pretty much standard drawing with, uh, with a brush. Um, the mode uh, is in default. Uh, current color is uh, black. If I go and pick a different color, uh, let's say I go to the reddish, pick that one, I'm drawing red. <clears throat> if I'm selecting blue, pick that color. Uh, or maybe I use other color pickers. There's plenty of different color pickers. Uh, <clears throat> whatever you like here. So right now, if I wanted to draw something like uh, a triangular shape, I would have to be pretty good at drawing this by hand. Uh, the linear tool or the curve tool are going to be handy, <coughs> no pun intended, <laughs> intended there. Uh, if, you, if you want to draw something going along a perfect straight line, at least as far as initially laying it out, what actually happens with those dabs uh, from the brush can still be subject to a lot of changes. Uh, if you look at the settings, there can be random position random size let's do that so you have some of them smaller some of them bigger actually they all seem to be the same size but that varies based on whatever that first initial size is uh, and in this case uh, what I'm gonna do also have a look at the random position and now it's actually a different story where every one of these dabs is randomly positioned a little bit off the actual uh, perfect line dab <coughs> or direction uh, and so the same goes for um, the, the curve tool. Let's have a look at that. The curve tool um, has initially a mode where you add points. And you see uh, you have a point here. You can just click here to get the first point located in that place. And then another one, and it gives you a straight line. And then let's say we do another line here and another one. And the moment you have three, uh, four points or more, it starts using an interpolated mode. You can keep adding more points. Uh, if you want, you can actually change this to a straight line. There's an icon here on that secondary uh, context bar and that is to make it uh, sort of a straight line polygon appearance rather than a smooth interpolated curve. There's also closing it. You can go from the last point to the first point. Right? Close this off and uh, sometimes you'll need to grab these points. You can see as you get close to the points uh, they'll give you a little box, a highlight showing that it's ready to be selected and moved again. Um, so let's say we have a curve like this, but we want to uh, give it a slightly more uh, sophisticated uh, round appearance. Uh, and oh, by the way, you can grab the existing points or you can click in between and uh, basically uh, insert the new point automatically. Uh, oh, that one did not see any. So uh, there's a couple of different scenarios. Let's go and close this again. Uh, and keep it in a smooth, so there's two different interpolation. This is a cat mole and there's a B-spline interpolation as well. Uh, with the B-spline, uh, your points that you placed are actually sort of a scaffolding or a control cage or control line. 
and uh, the actual curve that you'll get is going to be showing in red here and that's the one along which the the brush is going to appear all right so how do you do this now how do you get the brush to actually paint along that let me go first the non-closed scenario where the curve remains open we know this was the first point it should paint from here and draw it all along that so there's a couple of tools here finish this is how we finish that curve the first one right here is probably the first one to use and there you go it, it's randomly positioning it randomly sizing it and it goes along that path uh, as we as we render it and so for instance if we go and change the settings to say no random position and also no random size then uh, clicking this finish will basically have the dabs appear in a sort of somewhat more predictable way going in uh, along that curve and <clears throat> uh, there's another mode let's go clear this there's another mode and that one is the second one here that one's paint the brush and be sure to take the time to read those tool tips they're, they're very informative and the paintbrush is uh, a little bit kind of simulating a, a uh, it's kind of simulating a, a tablet right where the pressure is very thin very light at first and then you gradually get bigger uh, as the pressure goes up and then it comes back down so let me go and clear uh, these couple of icons here are here to clear the curve I'm gonna go clear the image and then I'm gonna go and clear uh, and start a new curve and this one here is just gonna be something like a W shape something like that okay and that shape if I if I want to actually draw it rather than click a couple of points there's this option here right freehand draw curve so I can go and do something like this but that's just defining the curve that's not yet painting it right if I once I have that curve I can actually make some changes to it uh, well I, I'd have to go and say let's go back to move mode move points uh, without inserting uh, new ones uh, or even in the regular mode where you could still insert new ones as well um, and, and then once you have done with that you can go and use the finish mode and the finish tool will render it along that well it would be nice if we could actually see that happen automatically at the end of the curve right when we do this draw mode this one here where we uh, kind of smooth curve it and have it automatically render the moment we release the button the mouse button when, they, when we're done drawing that curve to have automatically the curve being rendered the the dabs appearing along that so uh, instead of doing this manually or this one where it also changes the size along that path what I'm talking about is to have this one here the auto in this section here you have the automatic mode and that's automatically stroke the path uh, the moment you're done so you draw one and boom it's done draw another one and it's done so each of those you can also have instead of the regular draw mode you can have the automatic uh, paint the brush along that so it's it's doing this changing of the shape uh, the size along that particular progression all right so that's one thing to experiment with uh, the automatic mode uh, the uh, non-automatic mode is certainly very uh, desirable too, very powerful. And so when you draw a curve like this and then you say, let's go render it, uh, that's a, a great way to create fairly sophisticated shapes, actually. Uh, like for instance, let's go clear this and uh, say we, we're doing some sort of a uh, curve that's like self-intersecting. Let's go something like this, go kind of a butterfly shape. And perhaps this one needed to be around here and then we go here and this one needed to be about the middle and then we close it All right, so we have sort of a, a butterfly uh, profile here or outline um, and, and now I'm gonna go with the curve but not with the dabs <clears throat> so I want the step distance to be a little bit uh, closer and you know, just the original what was it about seven or six and back to the curve the curve is still here I can render it along that there you go finish it and so that's doing this and now I'm gonna change color and I'm gonna change the settings the size of the brush actually I don't have to go to settings for that I can see it right there change the size to maybe half that and uh, finish it again and so now we have the red curve on top of that teal one let's say we want one more like a light yellow and um, we'll make it very small let's go to step the step will remain the same but the size will change something like 10, 14, 20-ish, but also the opacity, maybe we don't want it fully opaque, so we'll see a little bit of the red going through that still. Let's go finish it, 
and there you go. All right, so you can tell that there's a way to create very sophisticated combinations with this, right? You can you can uh, have the curve um, do all sorts of intricate uh, positional changes, shapes, and stuff, and then actually decide how to render it. And it can again, it can be a rendering where there's a lot of randomness and stuff happening to it. Uh, you could have, for instance, the settings. Um, <coughs> let's see. Um, <clears throat> there's the the random position uh random position there you go let's give it a lot of random positioning and so if i'm if i'm making the size a little bit bigger something like this but the opacity pretty low there you go and um let's go render that again finish it up now you see there's a lot of randomness to that maybe that was a little bit too much let's undo this and reduce the random position a little bit uh, perhaps add a little bit random size as well and finish it once more. There you go. All right, so <clears throat> that's kind of an idea of some of the stuff you can do with the curve tool. Many times you might want to temporarily store that curve. That is a new feature in version 10. Uh, you can see under the more options here, there's a couple of things to do uh, relative to drawing the curve or animating it. If you have actually a placeholder for an animation, if you have created a bunch of frames, you can animate this. There's also uh, the roto tools here to do uh, um, rotoscoping and tracking uh, the movement of uh, the background and then having perhaps uh, uh, a mat or something, a blur rate and stuff like that. Uh, oh, here's the draw curve, right? So you can store that curve, uh, not draw curve, store curve. And then you could do other things with that curve. You could uh, change it to a different shape. Maybe make these points go a bit more on the inside. Uh, this one here too, this one, and this one here. So we have a curve that's kind of similar and derived from the original. Uh, let's make it so that it's kind of an inset look. Give it a different color. Uh, reduce the random position. Uh, keep the or to almost zero. Uh, keep the random size and render that again. And so now we have another curve. And let's say for some reason you want to go back to this curve. Well, let's first store this one. That's a really good practice to have. So store uh, curve number two, go back to curve number one. We have now restored that curve. And uh, we can go back to something else. Maybe use another one of these brushes. Uh, there are so many brushes that will look very good in that mode as well. Let's use this and select the curve tool, stay on it and uh, render it. Let's see what happens there. And there you go. Now maybe we want to fade that a little bit. So there's an interactive undo to fade that last action. Don't have to have it at full blown intensity necessarily. Uh, but that's that's where you can see uh, how, how you can create combinations of different effects, work with those curves that you store if you want to use them furthermore. All right, so there's a couple of other things you can do with those curves, by the way, other than drawing a a brush along that path and again the brush can be very uh, varied it can be you know that that the boingly here with the balls so if you if you use this brush this curve and then render it along that uh, you'll see that ball going along that uh, <clears throat> if you if you look at some of the others what was that uh, there was a sort of a hot dog the one that looked like a bit of a hot dog let me see if I can find it there yeah, this one and you know when you paint like it it's like this and so if you if you use the curve tool <coughs> this one here you can uh, <coughs> finish it and have that uh, hot dog going on along that curve um, so there's a couple of other things that you'd like to do and uh, when you have a curve sometimes you want to not uh, draw along the path but rather use it as a stencil to fill so there's a fill tool here also, right? so you can fill it along that. In this case, I'm filling it with the plain color, but the fill settings allow you to do very different things with that. You can use a pattern. Uh, this is the current pattern that I have in a custom brush. So you could go uh, in the fill settings here and say, okay, let's actually not do the plain color. Instead, let's use the pattern fill. And then you could indicate even if you want to warp it or, or do some, some other based some other type of operations with that uh, so here again uh, let's go fill it and then there is a couple of other things we could do uh, one is to actually apply that to alpha so this selection this curve that I have drawn is not a selection yes but I can make it so I can say uh, something like here draw to alpha 
right? Fill the curve, drawing it to the alpha channel. And that can be either replacing or adding to it. So you can combine multiple curves and do all sorts of more sophisticated operations, cutting something out from another. In fact, let's do that. First, I'm going to replace. So now I have the selection. You see the marching ants. You see the pink uh, on the outside where it's not selected. And now I'm going to go select this curve. And I'm going to go and do the same tool with the alpha. But this time I'm going to subtract it. So the inside has been subtracted. So we have just this side here, this lobe, and this lobe on the left that remains selected. You can see that if you go to the selection and store the selection, that's what's in the alpha channel right now. That's your current selection mask. And so there's, uh, again, a, a lot of uh, sophisticated selections you can create with that. And of course, what you would do with that is up to you. Uh, some of the tools, some of the reasons you might want to do that is just to create, pick that up as a custom brush. Uh, that would be something like this here, right? You'd say, go to brush and um, use the selected as, as brush. Control B is a shortcut for that. So now if you enable the preview of the brush, you see that I have that here. I can go and clear all this and just paint with this uh, custom brush. Uh, there's a lot of other things you can do though. Uh, with the custom brush, first of all, if you need it, you can store it to work with it later on, minimize it, put it on the side. Uh, but also, um, while it's in this uh, selection mode when the selection mask you, you might use that for instance to darken the outside so you might want to invert the selection so everything on the outside is now selected including the stuff on the inside here which was not selected initially the only thing that is now not selected is what you see here this c like and the mirror copy to that so uh, at this point i'd like to perhaps after having uh, inverted the alpha i could go and apply a filter here and for instance uh, set the change the value make it darker on on those pixels and uh and then perhaps go back to uh, doing some transform also on that alpha uh, something like uh, um, apply an effect like uh, an embossing right there's an embossed look that you might want to have uh actually that one is applying oh there it is yep uh so if we clear the alpha now uh, you now have a bit of a coloration that looks like a, a bit of embossing. So there's a lot of different things you can do with alpha in the first place and the curve really, uh, the curve tool really is a tool that can be even more sophisticated in the results, uh, giving you different ways to combine multiple curves and uh, create uh, perhaps some sophisticated logos or cutouts or shapes that you use for uh, who knows what? I mean, it could be, again, just a brush that you, you paint with. You might want that brush to cast a shadow uh, you might want that brush to, uh, let's see, where is that drop shadow? You can actually do that to the brush itself, so it now has it in the brush. Uh, or you can enable the shadow drop as a effects, a post effects on the brush to enable it and do a shadow drop. And so now it's doing an additional shadow to that. <coughs> and uh, of course, also do all sorts of transforms, like uh, allow custom transforms to do things like uh, rotation. Uh, uh, you know, so that it ro turns around and rotates with, with the direction in which you're painting and that sort of thing. So, all right, thanks. I think that'll be enough for today. There's a lot of things you can do with that curve tool. It's just a matter of realizing that there's a couple of ways to create those curves in the first place and then a couple of ways to use them. And I did not even do any of the animated ones here. Uh, if you're on PD Howler, there's actually more to it. What I wanted to do is really just show most of the things you can do with PD Artist at this time. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon again.